So hello and welcome to tonight's webinar event. Uh, I'm Cathy Elf, the Chief Executive of the Macula Society and as ever it is delightful to see so many people joining us this evening. One of the uh, many challenging characteristics of age-related macular degeneration is that it happens at a time of life when we may be affected by lots of other health issues, especially uh, those that appear, of course, as we age. Uh, it's especially hard if that turns out to be more than one eye condition. Now, we very often hear from people who have AMD and uh, cataract at the same time. A cataract, of course, <clears throat> is a very common condition in older people. In some parts of the world, it's the most common cause of sight loss. But here in the UK, of course, we have an absolutely wonderful and very successful uh, operation to cure cataract. A common question, of course, is, is it wise to have cataract surgery if one has AMD as well? So often does this question arise that we are devoting tonight's webinar entirely to this issue. Do remember that we always leave time for questions uh, at the end of our talks. And so if you uh, do have anything that you want to ask, pop those questions in the chat box and we'll get to as many as we can before the end of the session. Now, though, I am very pleased to welcome tonight's guest, who is Professor Gary Misson. Now, Gary is a practicing NHS uh, consultant ophthalmic surgeon. He has a general interest in all aspects of the eye, but he specializes in cataract surgery and he practices at the South Warwickshire NHS Foundation Trust and privately at the Warwickshire Nuffield Hospital. Gary is uh, also Professor of Ophthalmology at Aston University in Birmingham where he teaches and engages in both basic and translational vision, vision research on macular function. He has degrees, plural, in physiology and medicine from Charing Cross Hospital Medical School in London, which is now Imperial College School of Medicine. Uh, his postgraduate training was in Oxford, in Birmingham and at Moorfields Eye Hospital in London. And his pre professional qualifications include fellowships at the Royal College of Surgeons of England and the Royal College of Ophthalmologists. He also has a BA in mathematics and a PhD in bio-optical bio -optical engineering. He's authored more than 50 peer-reviewed journals as well as a textbook of ophthalmic pathology. You are in very good hands tonight on the subject of cataract and AMGs, AMD. So, Gary, welcome and thank you very much indeed for joining us. I'm going to hand over to you straight away. Thank you. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and thank you, Cathy, for your uh, uh, kind, if rather embarrassing introduction. Um, it's a great pleasure to be invited to talk to you uh, this evening. Um, I'm just going to put my screen on here. Bear with me. So we're going to be talking about um, cataracts and AMD and what you do about your cataracts. Um, in, there are a number of questions I'm frequently asked in clinical practice, such as what's the difference between cataracts and AMD? I've got cataracts and AMD. Is it worth me having cataract surgery? Another one is, I've been told I need cataract surgery, but I'm happy with my vision. I don't like the idea of surgery, and do I have to have the op? Is cataract surgery safe is a common question. Another one is, I've been told that I've got cataracts, but it's not worth doing cataract surgery because, because I also have AMD. Is this true? Could cataract surgery make my AMD worse? And the newspapers say that I have, I can have special lenses implanted in my eyes that will allow me to read again. Is this true? Well, I'll be addressing all these questions uh, and any more that you might have um, in and after this talk. It's probably best to start with basics, as there's often some misunderstanding about what cataracts actually are um, and what should be done about them. Now, I am presenting slides here, and I know many of you are visually impaired. Um, what I'm saying is very much what is in the slides. There are, are a couple of pictures at the beginning, but most of my slides are text slides. Um, well, first, let's look at an eye. Let's think of the eyes being a bit like a camera. Um, there are very many similarities between eyes and cameras. A camera has a lens that focuses an image of the world 
on a light sensitive film or nowadays an electronic light sensitive chip that converts the image into a picture. The eye works on much the same principle in that there's a focusing apparatus in the front of the eye comprising the window like cornea and a clear natural lens behind the iris. The combination of the cornea and the lens focuses an image onto the light sensitive retina. Now if you think of the eye as being a bit like a goldfish bowl then the lens is at the opening of the bowl and the retina is a thin lining on the inner surface of the bowl. The retina senses light, light and interprets any image forming on it and converts the information into an electric signal that's conveyed by nerve fibres towards the brain. Now different parts of the human retina do different things. The part of the retina at the focal point of the lens is very specialised for highly sensitive vision, um, the, the sort of vision that you in open inverted commas see with. That's the vision that you use to read. It's called discriminative vision and it's also this part of the retina is good for colour vision as well. This retina, this part of the retina in the central retina is best, works best in daylight and we know this as you know as the macula. Now the peripheral retina away from the macula, that is away from the point of best focus, uh, is less sensitive to visual discrimination and to colour, but it's much more sensitive to uh, than the macula um, at reduced levels of illumination, such as at night. And this part of the retina helps us to navigate our world, of, which is usually full of obstacles. Now a cataract, what is a cataract? A cataract is a focusing of this cloudy lens at the front of the eye. It's often an ageing process, but can result from medical conditions such as diabetes or from some medications, including um, oral steroids, which many, uh, many people take for potentially life-threatening conditions. So a cataract is a cloudiness of the focusing lens behind the iris. It's not a skin that forms over the eye. There are uncommon conditions that can form, form a skin over the surface of the eye, but these conditions are not cataracts. Now, knowing how the eye works, um, we can predict what a cataract, a cloudy focusing lens, will do. Because it's lost the ability to focus a clear image on the retina, a cataract causes blurred vision. And this blurred vision is not only in the central part of our vision, but it's also peripheral as well. Now, cataracts can also scatter light over the retina, causing the symptom of glare. And cataracts are often brownish in colour, so can change colour perception, um, often without you being aware of it. In fact, many people aren't aware of their cataracts being this brownish colour until they have them removed. When the when the world becomes a much brighter and more colourful place. Now, some types of cataracts start off by making the natural focusing lens stronger and making affected individuals more nearsighted. And some of you who have early cataracts may have noticed that you don't need your reading glasses anymore. Uh, and this is a common um, early symptom of the development of cataracts. And if you notice a change in the vision, you often go back to see your optician for an upgrade in the spectacles. And that's, but eventually you discover that the specs aren't never quite right for your vision. And there reaches a point when the spectacles are no good at all. And then we need to start to think about doing something about the cataracts. Now, before I move on to cataract treatment, um, I'd just like to compare what happens with cataracts and what happens with age-related macular degeneration. Now, whereas cataracts interfere with image formation on the retina, AMD, macular degeneration, causes damage to the retina, so it interferes with image detection. Cataracts affect all the vision, that's central vision and peripheral vision, um, unlike the macula, which only affects, well, macular degeneration, which only affects the macula, it's in the name. Therefore, cataracts can also peripheral vision, but in macular degeneration, peripheral vision is usually well preserved. 
And there's some similarities between cataracts and the symptoms of AMD in that both can affect central vision, that's our ability to read. Both, as I've said previously, affect color vision and both can cause glare. But despite these distinctions, it can, be sometimes, it can sometimes be difficult to determine how much of a patient's visual problems are due to their cataracts and how much are due to AMD. Um, as I've said, both AMD and cataracts cause problems with central vision, color vision and glare. Now, apart from these things, AMD and cataracts are similar in other ways too. As Kathy said right at the beginning of the, this, this webinar, both conditions are common. Both affect the same age group, people over 60. And because they're common, they, these two conditions often coexist. Now, let's go back to thinking about our cataracts. What can we do about cataract? Firstly, no treatment for the cataracts is a perfectly good treatment option. If your cataracts are mild and you don't have any symptoms, or your symptoms are very mild, then removing your cataracts probably won't make your vision much better. And why subject yourself to a potentially uh, risky operation uh, when you're happy with your vision? We'll talk a little more about this a bit later on. The next thing to do if you are having or beginning to get some problems with your cataracts is go and see your optometrist. They can often adjust your glasses um, to make you see better. However, there reaches a point when cataracts are sufficiently severe to interfere with your quality of vision and you can't correct it with glasses anymore. Um, and at this point, uh, when you're developing visual problems, or for example, if you wish to continue to drive and you are reaching the DVA, DVLA limit, then we need to think about surgery. We need to think about removing your cataracts for you. Now, surgery is invasive and has risks, so we must be doing it for a good reason. And what are the benefits um, of, of cataract surgery? Um, well, it improves your vision, uh, it can improve your spectacle error, it can improve your quality of life, and also sometimes removing your cataracts um, the, uh, it improves your, uh, it can help to treat other coexisting conditions. It also allows for better examination of the back of the eye. Now, how is cataract surgery done? Well, it's usually done under a local anaesthetic. Almost certainly these days it's done as a day case. We use tiny, tiny little incisions um, to make, uh, to do the operation. And we don't use any stitches anymore. Well, or very rarely do we use stitches. We use a technique called phaco emulsification, which in most cases is using ultrasound to fragment the natural lens in your eye, turn it into a sort of a mush, and then we suck that out to create a space where the um, original natural lens was. Now, once we've removed the natural lens from the eye, uh, you, your eye wouldn't be able to see very well because it's lost its focusing lens. So we then have to replace that focusing lens with a beautifully crafted little piece of plastic called an intraocular lens implant. Um, and once that's done, uh, that's basically the end of the operation. You'll have to use lots of drops after the operation. And you need to be a bit careful after the surgery as well and follow your surgeon's instructions. All surgeons have different sets of instructions, uh, although they follow along much the same lines of just being a bit careful after the surgery. So we've already mentioned the benefits, uh, improve your vision, correction of spe spectacle error, improve your quality of life and help to treat coexisting eye disease such as glaucoma and also to allow better examination of the back of your eye, for example, if you have AMD or diabetic eye disease. Now, what are the potential risks? Um, as with any surgical procedure, there are always risks. But thankfully for cataract surgery, the risks are small. But they do occur and you need to be aware of them. I'll run through a few of the risks here but if you are undergoing cataract surgery your surgeon should explain these to you in the consenting process. 
First of all, there are really serious risks. There are serious site-threatening risks, such as infection, um, retinal detachment, and swelling that can affect the back of your eye. Other risks are less severe, um, but can change your sight permanently. Almost definitely, you'll notice that the vision is different after the surgery. Um, occasionally, we fail to choose the correct implant, and you might be either short-sighted or long-sighted after the operation, something which we didn't quite predict. Your eyes might, be, feel, might feel a bit dry, you might get some glare, and you'll certainly notice a change in your colour perception. Um, now, once we've done one eye, um, there's a fair possibility that even though you may not have much of a cataract in your other eye, we may have to go uh, on to second eye surgery just to balance your two eyes up. So if you've been told you have cataracts and cataracts are there, well, shouldn't they be removed anyway, even though you don't have any symptoms? Well, most people over the age of 60 have some degree of cataract and probably one in three people over the age of 60 will have cataract surgery during their lifetime. So why not remove them anyway? Well, in my surgical practice, I really take the view that if it isn't broken, you don't fix it. If you don't have any symptoms, leave things alone until such time that you're, you're having a bit more of a problem and you're prepared to accept this very small risk of the, the surgery. So why put yourself at risk for no benefit? Now, what about the benefits of removing cataracts in people with macular degeneration? Now, if we assume that the cataract is significant, um, th that is, if you didn't have AMD, your surgeon, surgeon would be suggesting that you have it removed to make your vision better. Well, this really depends, the benefits really depend on the extent of your macular degeneration. It, removing your cataracts may improve your visual acuity, that is your central vision, the vision that we use to read with. You'll certainly get an improvement in your peripheral vision, even if you don't notice it, um, you will be able to get around better um, if your cataract was significant. The vision will be brighter, there'll be more light getting to the back of your eye, and depending on how much macular degeneration you've got, your colour vision will, uh, will be better. Now, even if you don't notice an improvement in your visual acuity, removing the cataract, I consider to be part of the um, low vision aid visual optimization process. So if you've been sent to an LVA clinic um, for um, consideration of low vision aids, then certainly removing your cataract, if the cataract is significant, is part of this um, visual optimization process. And something I mentioned before, removing your cataracts will allow the, the ophthalmologist um, a better view of the back of your eye. They're not, remember, if a cataract's in your eye, you can't see out, and the ophthalmologist can't see in either. Um, so removing the cataract will allow for more accurate assessment and treatment of any problems at the back of your eye, such as AMD or diabetic maculopathy, for example. Now, let's go back to our frequently asked questions. I think I've asked the, answered the question, what's the difference between cataract and AMD? And I think I've also answered the question, is cataract surgery safe? Majority of cataract procedures are safe. Um, the risks are probably less than 2% of, um, of, of, of complications. So let's take our frequently asked questions in turn. Here's the first one I suggested. I have cataracts and AMD. Is it worth me having cataract surgery? Well, yes, if the cataracts are clinically significant. So that would be if you didn't have AMD, removing your cataracts would make your vision better. Yes, if you are driving and wish to remain within the DVA limit, that assumes that your AMD isn't that bad um, and your cataracts are the main cause of, of preventing you from uh, being within the legal limit for driving. No, your cataracts aren't worth removing if the cataracts are very small and removing them is unlikely to improve your vision. Our next question, is I've been told I need cataract surgery. I'm happy with my vision. 
I don't like the idea of surgery. Do I have to have the op? No, you don't have to have the op at all. If you're happy with the vision, um, and if you don't want the surgery, it's your choice. You don't have to have it. Cataracts only very rarely damage your eyes permanently. There is one time when removing your cataracts is important if you don't have any symptoms, and that is if you're approaching the DVA limit. limit. A lot of people don't realise they've got cataracts, it's creeping up on them, and suddenly they're told by their optometrist that the cataracts are significant and they are just outside the legal limit for driving and they need to have something done about it. Now again, it depends on how much AMD you've got as well. Um, so operating on people with cataracts and AMD, we can't promise that we'll get you within the DVLA, DVLA limit. Now, the next question I've, I'm often asked is, I've been told that I have cataracts and it's not worth doing cataract surgery because I also have AMD. Is this true? Well, this depends really on how much cataract and how much AMD. As I said before, if your cataracts are not significant, then you're unlikely to notice any benefit. But if your cataracts are dense, then cataract surgery may be very beneficial. It certainly will improve your peripheral vision and the brightness of your vision and also possibly colour. It's part of the LVA rehabilitation uh, process, but do have some realistic, realistic expectations of what the cataract surgery can do. Um, if you have enough macular degeneration to affect your central vision, then removing the cataract will not get your vision, your central vision back. Um, it may not get you back to reading, it may not get you back to the DVLA standard, but it should improve your quality of life. In my opinion, and certainly in my practice, I don't think cataracts should ever be refused if there's a realistic chance of visual improvement. But this is very much a case by case decision. Now, can cataract surgery make my AMD worse? This is hot off the press in some respects because um, published this year is a paper in the Journal of Ophthalmology um, called Cataract Surgery and the Risk of Developing Late Age Related Macular Degeneration. And this is a, um, a report that's um, arisen from the ARIDS 2 study. The, um, age-related eye disease study. You may have heard of this. It's a very big study that was undertaken in the United States in the last, in the 1990s to the early 2000s. Um, and in, for the case of cataract surgery, um, it was concluded from the study that cataract surgery did not increase the risk of developing late AMD among um, participants with up to 10 years of follow-up. That's individuals with, um, with, with, with macular degeneration. So I think we can conclude from that paper um, that cataract surgery uh, is unlikely to make your AMD worse. Although there have been other papers that suggest that it, uh, it could, but these papers are, are usually on small um, samples of individuals. And I think this paper is the definitive one to quote. I have some patients coming to me, angry with me, annoyed with me, um, upset and sad because they feel that cataract surgery has made their AMD worse. Now, as we've seen in the previous paper, it's unlikely for uncomplicated cataract surgery. If the cataract surgery had been complicated and there had been problems, yes, well, it may have made things worse. But the risk of progression of dry and wet age related macular degeneration isn't generally associated with cataract surgery in most of these studies. The problem is age related macular degeneration is a progressive condition and cataract surgery will not halt that progression. And also after you've had your cataracts removed, after anyone's had their cataracts removed, um, there's a very great difference in vision from what it was like before the surgery and what it's like after the surgery. And there may be a change, there may not necessarily be an improvement. And we're all looking for cause and effect and sometimes, sadly, things do deteriorate and random events happen. What about future developments? 
Um, well, it's not part of my remit to talk about AMD treatment here, but we are developing cataract surgery all the time. It's becoming safer and safer. Uh, newer techniques are coming to the fore. Some of you may have heard about implantable telescopic low vision aids. These are very specialized intraocular lens implants um, that could be placed um, at the time of cataract surgery instead of a conventional implant. Um, these project a magnified image on the back of your eye. Um, and for some very motivated people, they may have some benefits. But it's nothing that I would actually advise most people to 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 go for partly because once you've implanted something in somebody's eye it's going to be there pretty well permanently and if you don't like the result I'm afraid it's going to take another operation to put it back and that second operation has all the whole set of risks and uh, problems poss possibly associated with it it's much easier to use um, a handheld low vision aid uh, telescope or whatever, rather than actually implanting one in the eye. Um, there's research going on into stem cells um, uh, with respect to macular degeneration. I won't mention that now, and neither will I mention the electronic subretinal implants, the chips that are being implanted uh, underneath people's maculas. These are all very much experimental. I often get patients coming to me with holding their favorite newspaper or um, a printout from the internet. Um, and they say, I've read about this new technology. Um, I, I'm very keen to have it done. Can you refer me to America or wherever this technique is being, being, um, being, being carried out, being performed and being perfected? A lot of these new technologies are new and they're often tested in a small number of individuals and often we hear about the successes, we often don't hear about the failures. Listen to independent and public funded institutions such as the Macular Society, uh, such as in the United Kingdom, the College of Ophthalmologists, um, the College of Optometrists, um, the NHS has a very good website or international websites such as the American Academy of Ophthalmology or the National Institute of Health all have um, uh, very balanced and um, uh, user-friendly uh, websites with the latest information. I would suggest that you be prepared, be a little bit aware, um, be aware of private organizations offering unconventional treatments and breakthrough treatment claims, you know, and if it sounds too good to be true, well, it sometimes is. Now, I just want to summarize. If you have a cataract and AMD, then explore the possibility of cataract. If you are aware of your vision symptoms deteriorating recently in a way that you just described the cataract developing. That is a generalized reduction in your vision, not just a failure of your central vision. Do think about having cataract surgery if your cataract surgeon states that there's a good chance of a significant improvement in your vision. And you are happy to accept that small risk of cataract surgery. You must be aware that you may not notice any improvement in your central vision. That is, it may not improve your re reading vision it may not get you back to driving. That is, have realistic expectations of cataract surgery. You know, cataract surgery does what it says. It removes a cataract. It doesn't make your macular degeneration any better. Macular degeneration does not stop you from having cataract surgery. It does not increase the surgical risk in most people. Um, but AMD will limit the improvement in vision after cataract surgery. And the AMD will progress with or without the cataract surgery. However, final line, most people with AMD and cataracts notice an improvement in their vision after cataract surgery. Now, that's my bit done. Thank you for listening. I'm very pleased to be able to answer any of your questions. I suspect there are a lot of questions. Gary, thank you very much indeed. That was a brilliant talk. Um, if you would mind unsharing your slides so that we can see your very handsome face in full. Um, <laughs> that'd be great.
Um, so we do indeed have quite a, lot of, uh, quite a lot of questions coming in straight away. So I, I'm, I'm going to start slightly just a little bit down the down the list at the at the um, uh, this is this is a very interesting question. I have central vision loss due to hairline splits in the center of the retina. These then let blood into the eye, which later scarred over. Now that sounds to me like wet macular degeneration. So I'm guessing this person has wet macular de de degeneration. Am I safe to undergo surgery? I'm classed as high risk by my specialist, but he says he feels the cataracts should be treated. Now I'm guessing you're saying go with the expert. You. Yes, um, absolutely. Um, listen to your consultant. Um, if your consultant feels that you're going to get an improvement in your vision, then I would strongly advise you to take his advice. Um, I, I give this advice frequently. Um, the, my question would be, are you uh, very short-sighted? Um, because um, if you are very short-sighted, um, then removing the cataract might also be able to reduce your short-sightedness a little bit too. Um, but yes, listen to your consultant. Um, they're the professionals. They've done it an awful lot. Um, um, and uh, uh, yes, listen to the advice. So I think cataract surgery is the most common surgical procedure done in the NHS. Is that right? Have I got that right? Um, it is yeah. obviously... Um, incredibly common now and the record of its safety is is very reassuring isn't it I think. Very much so, very much so yes yes and it's getting safer and safer all the time with better techniques. Another question here um, this is actually somebody has asked about myopic maculopathy because um, we talked about AMD particularly here but of course there are similar conditions myopic maculopathy um, disease of the, of the macula caused by um, a high degree of short sightedness, which can create a similar condition to wet macular degeneration. Uh, are, are, is, is the safety profile of cataract in these patients similar, do you think? Slightly more uh, risky in people who are very short sighted. Um, in the absence of maculopathy in people who are short sighted, well, first of all, why are people short sighted? People are short sighted because they've got big eyeballs. Um, and we're all born with the same amount of retinal tissue. And as the eye grows, as it becomes more and more short-sighted, all that retinal tissue is stretched across the back of the eye. Um, so that means uh, it's thinner in some places and cataract surgery in people who are very short-sighted has a slightly higher risk of a complication called a retinal detachment. Um, having said that, the majority of people who are very short-sighted don't have um, retinal detachments, it's just the risk is higher. And there are great potential benefits from having cataract surgery if you're very short-sighted. As I've said, it's, if we choose the implant lens correctly, we can reduce your short-sightedness, you know, from a very high level, perhaps minus 10, 12 or more, to something that is more normal-sighted. Um, I would always advise people who are previously very short-sighted to remain a little bit short-sighted about minus two because that's useful near vision. Um, but uh, but cataract surgery in high myopes um, is, is is something that we do quite a lot of. It is relatively safe but slightly more complicated, uh, some slightly more risky than than non-myopic. Um, another question around um, uh, a gene genetic macular condition. So again, although we've concentrated on AMD. Uh, tonight we do have lots of people online clearly who have inherited retinal diseases yep. inherited macular conditions is it, again the, the safety profile of, of um cataract operation in these patients um pretty well the same as for uh, any any anyone without an inherited maculopathy provided that it's not associated with high myopia or glaucoma um, so if you say have something like Stargardt's um, uh, or a cone dystrophy, um, then cataract surgery is, um, is just as safe. Um, in fact, cone dystrophies and retinitis pigmentosa and those inherited retinal dystrophies are associated, are associated with cataracts. They have a higher risk of cataract formation. Um, and it's quite common to do cataract surgery in these individuals at a younger age than normal. Um, and another non-AMD condition, diabetic maculopathy. So uh, somebody here who's had about 100 uh, eye injections for, uh, for their diabetic maculopathy and have been told that the risk for cataract surgery is due to PCR, which is posterior capsular 
rupture. rupture. Is that right? Right. Yep. <laughs> yes, but the, one, the one thing cataract surgeons want to avoid all the time is posterior capsular rupture. Um, when we take the cataract, well, first of all, if you think of a cataract as being a, or the natural lens as being a bit like a peach, it's got a skin on the surface of it, it's got a fleshy bit further inside, and it's got a dense central bit called the nucleus or, you know, the dense stone of the peach, if you like. So imagine this sort of peach-like structure inside of your eye. What cataract surgeons are out to do is to empty the peach but leave most of the skin intact. So we make a little hole in the peach skin at the front. We then use our instruments to get rid of the, the dense nucleus, the, the stone of the peach, and a little vacuum cleaner to get rid of the, um, the, 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 the fleshy bits of the peach, leaving basically the bag, the, the, the peach skin behind with a hole in the front of it. So the, the peach skin is the, is the capsule of the lens. Um, and we support the intraocular lens implant in that capsule. Um, you know, it's, the capsule is a bit like a goldfish bowl within the goldfish bowl. So, um, um, the um, uh, and when we 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 put the intraocular lens into this little uh, capsule, and it's held in place by little spring-like um, arms. Now, if for whatever reason the capsule breaks in the wrong place when we're doing the surgery, we can't put the implant lens in the right place. Um, sometimes we can't even put the lens implant lens in at all and um, we've got to think about a different place to put the implant lens and if the 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 capsule breaks then the material behind the capsule the vitreous gel comes forward if the vitreous gel comes forward it pulls on the retina if that pulls on the retina that can potentially cause a retinal detachment and other problems in the retina so we really 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 want to avoid damaging this capsule, the lens capsule, when we do the surgery. And the posterior capsular rupture rate is about 1% um, in most experienced surgeons' hands. Um, we don't know why it's less, why it's not less than that. It's regularly is about 1%. Um, would, now your diabetic patient, would that increase the risk of posterior capsular rupture? There is possibly a slightly increased risk. Um, but there may be other reasons why the surgeon has suggested that that there's there's a risk of, of, of posterior capsular rupture here. But I think this, I, reading between the lines, I think the patient has been advised to have it. But they also want uh, wanted to have cataract surgery due to narrow angles. And I think narrow angles is related to glaucoma, isn't it? I'm, that's Very much so. Yep, yep, very much so. Little eyes. Um, now, where's myopic eyes? Are very, very big eyes, um, and the problem is the retina being stretched over the back. In smaller eyes, um, eyes that are hypermetropic and long-sighted eyes, um, they all the natural contents of the eye are all scrunched up a little bit more. So the lens is more towards the front of the eye. The iris is pushed forward. Um, and in the front of the eye, we've got a little circular drainage channel that allows the natural circulating fluid in the eye throughout into the outside world. And there's the eye pressure, uh, the intraocular pressure is, is maintained by fluid being pumped into the eye and fluid seeping out of the eye. And it seeps out of the eye just at the root of the iris. Now, shallow angles is where the iris is pushed forward um, and they um, they can potentially close over these little outflow channels in the front of the eye. Now, one way, one very good way of opening these channels is to remove your cataract because the cataract is pushing the iris forward. So if you remove the cataract, the iris drops backwards and that opens up that little, the, the angle between the iris and the inner side of the eye um, that allows the fluid to seep out of it. So removing your cataract in angle closure is a very good thing. It prevents you from getting angle closure glaucoma. And, and, and that causes damage to the optic nerve, doesn't it? So it can be very damaging to, to the vision. Well, there are two types of glaucoma. There's one type of glaucoma where the uh, where you don't have the scrunching of the iris against the, the, the what's called the drainage angle, um, and that's called open angle glaucoma. Um, and then you have the angle closure glaucoma where you have this angle 
front of the eye closed. Removing a cataract in both of those conditions is beneficial to glaucoma. In the angle closure type, it prevents you from getting angle closure glaucoma. It's a very good way of preventing it from, ha from happening. But even if you have the open angle type of glaucoma, then removing your cataract will, for some reason or other which we don't understand, reduce the eye pressure a little bit. And if we can reduce the eye pressure in your eye, it means that there's no pressure on the optic nerve at the back of the eye and it can slow down the process of glaucoma and allow the drops that you've been given for glaucoma to work a bit more effectively. So it sounds like this patient's been giving the right advice, really, that it sounds like this is probably mm. oh, yeah. uh, all makes sense. Um, OK, thank you. Another question here about somebody who has a badly scarred cornea from an accident uh, 45 years ago. Um, that eye also has wet AMD. Um, would cataract surgery be right for this patient? Um, or mentions also corneal transport, transplant. The other eye has dry AMD. This is a lot of bad luck, isn't it? <laughs> uh, no. Mild cataract, but can see, still see well enough to drive. So I guess it's whether the cataract surgery in the bad eye is, is worth doing, it should, should be done. Lots of potential problems here. Um, the, if you're managing reasonably well at the moment, leave well alone, um, because the benefits of removing the cataract in your bad eye, the one with the corneal scarring, probably are not very good, but, but it's difficult to say without, without seeing you, of course. Um, if the scar is right across the centre of the cornea, then removing the cataract at best would improve peripheral vision. It wouldn't improve focus, focused vision. A corneal graft is a very different scale of fish, a very different kettle of fish with respect to um, surgery. It's a big operation. Um, uh, it requires a lot of aftercare. Um, it's potentially risky. Um, there's always the risk of the graft rejecting. Um, and again, it's it, 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 what. Once you've started doing surgery on an eye, then sometimes it's, it's, it opens a can of worms, really. Um, it's a difficult question to answer, but just be careful and take the advice of your surgeon. OK, thank you. Um, another patient who has um, had ILEA injections for macular edema, ophthalmologist says that's improved, but uh, is now developing a macular hole. What happens yeah. next? Also cataract and astigmatism. Would cataract surgery improve the astigmatism? And also, what do you do about the macular hole and cataract? Okay, several questions here. Firstly, um, let's assume you don't have a macular hole. Let's just assume you've got astigmatism. Um, there are various ways of correcting astigmatism by, uh, with cataract surgery. My favourite way of doing it is to use a toric intraocular lens implant. That is a special type of implant that is specially designed to correct astigmatism. Um, they are available on the NHS in some places. I certainly, in my practice, my NHS practice, we use them uh, for uh, astigmatism over about two diopters of astig uh, two diopters. Um, so uh, that's one way of correcting astigmatism in cataract surgery. Another way of correcting astigmatism in cataract surgery is to use special incisions. Um, into the cornea, um, which is less predictable than using the toric implants. Toric implants are good. What happens with respect to the macular hole? Well, um, I would advise you to seek the opinion of a vitreo retinal surgeon, because if your macular hole is because the back of the eye has been damaged, sorry, I, the original condition was diabetic maculopathy, is that right? Uh, the original condition was, um, hang on a minute, uh, yes, macular edema, so I'm not sure whether macular it's edema. Diabetic, okay. diabetic macular edema or... Diabetic uh, macular edema, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, that's, yeah, that's difficult, that's sometimes difficult to treat. There are various types of macular hole. Macular holes arising from macular edema um, don't do very well from, with surgery. The other type of macular hole, the macular hole that you get um, as sort of an aging process, um, often works, responds quite well to, um, to surgical intervention. Um, 
but I would seek the advice and listen to the advice of a vitreo retinal surgeon here. Okay, thank you very much. So an another question here from somebody who is um, has wet AMD and is needing monthly injections. So this is what, what the, uh, the the clinicians call, with affection, frequent flyers that they need to go yeah. back very often. Um, the eye clinic referred to the AMD as not having settled down and say mm. that cataract surgery would be too risky. <laughs> Wait for the macular degeneration to settle down first before you get, get on with the cataract. Um, get the macular degeneration stable um, and then think about the cataract. And by stable, um, injections much less frequently than once a month. Um, you could really be causing a lot of problems by intervening surgically here. So get the back of the eye settled down first of all before thinking about the cataract surgery. Okay, thank you. That's quite clear. Uh, another one with PED and dry AMD um, and had surgery in the left eye. Uh, little improvement, but felt it was worth doing. Um, decide, deciding to try to have finding it difficult to decide about the other eye. Um, uh, if it goes wrong, she's worried about having really poor, poor vision. The cataract is getting worse. Um, uh, but that's a that's a complex case again isn't it then with yeah yeah going on in the same person balance, yes it's a, it's a balancing act really um and you know there will be a time when the cataract gets so bad that 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 uh, you that any improvement will be an improvement um but but hang on in there and wait until it gets a bit worse i think Mm. And, and, and this is now coming up quite a lot uh, and, and I, there are so many people who've got multiple things going on in their eyes and it so, must be so so frustrating. So somebody with subretinal fibrosis, posterior uveitis and wet AMD had had lots of injections. Um, she's had an Iluvian implant and the cataract, of course we know that this is a, Iluvian is a kind of steroid isn't it I think to reduce mm. inflammation in the eye but it is known to cause um, cause cataract um so this is again such a difficult decision balancing act isn't it about what balancing. is going to keep the vision best um again in this case it sounds it's very complex particularly with the posterior uveitis um people my general rule of thumb with individuals with any sort of inflammatory eye condition is wait for it to be settled for six six months before we proceed with surgery um you know Inflammation is a healing response. And if you start doing surgery, you're going to get an exaggerated healing response. You could really precipitate um, another episode of, of potentially sight-threatening uveitis. So wait for the uveitis to be well settled before thinking about surgery. Another one here, thank you, is um, somebody who um, has had one eye done, but actually now feels the eyes are quite un unbalanced. And you touched on this in saying that actually that is a problem and the chances are you will need to have both eyes done. Yeah, um, there are various ways around this. Um, if you have got quite good vision in the eye that hasn't had cataract surgery um, uh, and your eyes feel off balance and you don't like the idea of surgery, um, then wearing a contact lens um, in, the, in one or other of the eyes can balance the two eyes up. Um, Contact lenses don't have the same optical problems as spectacles. Um, they don't cause this magnification of images or minification of images. So wearing a contact lens in the um, in, in, in the opposite eye is, is sometimes effective. But I think here we're probably going to have the other other, other eye done eventually. So an, another, this is a slightly more technical question from uh, a, um, a rehabilitation officer who says, uh, they have clients who are keen for cataract surgery and have AMD. They're told they're not suitable because uh, of the risk of re uh, because of re retinal detachment. And, and this person is asking, what are the physiological issues that increase the risk of retinal detachment? Then, what is it that causes that additional risk? Well, uh, are they really at risk of developing retinal detachment? I don't really think they are, unless they've got myopic macular degeneration. You know, an eye with AMD has as much risk of developing retinal detachment as any normal eye um, without or any cataract eye without AMD. Um, whether they mean macular 
problems, retinal detachment of the macula or making the macular degeneration worse. Well, I think we've seen from our, from that, the, 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 that study, re, that recent study that uh, cataract surgery well done, well done and with no other complications doesn't have a particularly higher risk of, 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 um, of any other complication really. So here's, an, here's another one. People have such difficult decisions to make. This is a this is somebody who has the sight in one eye is very poor owing to AMD and there is cataract. The other eye has milder AMD but a worse cataract. Um, this surgeon doesn't want to operate on the better eye because of the risk of worsening it if cataract surgery goes wrong. So this person is in a on the horns of a dilemma here. <laughs> if I do they wait to see if the cataract gets worse? Do they risk having the eye Im imbalance post surgery that we've just been talking about? Um, what to do? What to do in these circumstances? I always think if a patient came to me and said, "I don't, I don't agree with your advice," I would be very happy if that patient sought advice from another ophthalmologist. Um, and having two people looking at at you and giving an opinion, if the opinions agree, well, there's your answer. If the opinions differ then perhaps you need to talk to your both consultants to ask for a further opinion there. Um, so never be shy about asking for a further opinion. Um, or your, your, your consultants should be quite happy to, to arrange for that. That's, a, that's good advice because um, you want your mind settled, don't you, about a decision like this? You don't want to be permanently on the horns of a dilemma. Obviously, it's very difficult for Gary to advise you specifically on what to do over this because um, it, it, he doesn't um, doesn't know you, you or your or your eyes. But a second opinion, it sounds like that might be one one that's worth going going for. Um, uh, another another condition, not an AMD, but somebody who has had. Um, uh, a retinal vein occlusion, I think, a blockage in the artery at the back of the eye, also has a dry, dry AMD, but had laser treatment for the retinal vein occlusion. Do you think that uh, uh, increases the risk at all? Is that something? No. There's possibly in an, well, first of all, just to correct you slightly, um, a retinal vein occlusion is an obstruction of a vein at the back of the eye. There are obstructions of arteries at the back of the eye as well. They're retinal arterial occlusions. Um, they're slightly different. Um, arterial occlusions usually are much worse um, and give you a very permanent, severe loss of vision. Whereas the venous occlusions, although they cause quite a lot of hemorrhage at the back of the eye, um, cause less of a problem with respect to vision. Now, in this, um, this, 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 this person, um, there's a slightly higher risk of you developing edema, macular edema after the surgery. Um, but if the surgeon knows this, then we can give you medication and so forth that might prevent or might reduce the risk of developing macular edema after cataract surgery with a vein occlusion. Um, it's certainly um, not something that would prevent you from having cataract surgery if the cataract was significant. Um, thank you. So a question here about, um, I'm not sure we're able to answer this here, but um, this is somebody who had um, uh, wet AMD in one eye, which she'd had injections of ILEA, dry in the other, had cataracts both eye. Now dry eye is turning to wet, also going to need injections. Um, hang on a minute. No, I'm, I think I'm on the wrong question. I don't think it actually was a question. It was a, a, an explanation of what had happened to them. So that's quite helpful. Let me see what this one is. Um, one question has come up actually is about prevention of cataract. Is there anything that can be done to prevent cataract happening? Uh, mm. If you're uh, cataract like AMD is something which we're all going to have if we live long enough. Um, if you have medical problems that may mean that you are at a greater risk of developing cataracts, for example, um, if you are a diabetic, um, basically being a diabetic brings on cataracts by about 10 years. Um, so individuals with cataracts have cataracts on average about 10 years earlier than, than, than individuals who are not diabetic. Good diabetic control is everything. Um, and that goes for diabetic retinopathy, diabetic maculopathy, um, etc. Diabetic control is, is, is very, very important. Um, uh, 
other there are thoughts that cataracts may be associated with bright light ultraviolet light for example um, and you can do no harm by um, by shading your eyes either with 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 sun spectacles or um, or uh, or wide brimmed hats for example they will help your symptoms of course and also potentially um, you know there's some evidence to suggest that this might be beneficial in people with macular degeneration anyway um, but with respect to there have been various trials of various drugs um, which have thought to um, prevent cataracts one of which is aspirin um, but while some positive results have been uh, reported um, these have been small trials and there's nothing that's come to the fore really as being a, a treatment or preventative uh, measure you can take for cataract okay um a question that came in actually on on email from somebody who has wet myopic macular degeneration in one eye for many years currently stable and treated with lucentis injections from time to time cataracts in both eyes and have had detached retina in both eyes treated successfully with laser surgery so the question is is two questions is cataract surgery likely to cause the disease to occur in the eye with no current disease and would it affect the eye which suffers from wet myopic macular disease so I, I think you answered that and said there's no evidence it should make it worse <laughs> are there any precautions I could request for uh, example an injection of lucentis before the cataract operation could that be protective in any way no, so no. is there a, and is, is, is there any protection that can be offered by for example mm. a, a sort of prophylactic <laughs> lucentis sure. injection yeah, I'm minimizing risk. Um, I don't really think so. Um, you could always argue that putting a needle into the eye is not something you would want to have done, you know, a week or so before surgery. You would like to have the eye as quiet as possible. Um, nothing specifically um, that if you were my patient, uh, given that story, what would I be doing? I would be going ahead with your surgery um, without any prophylaxis because there's no evidence to suggest that prophylaxis will be of any benefit to you. If you've had retinal detachment surgery and if you've had a, a treatment called a vitrectomy, um, that is the vitreous still has been removed as part of the um, uh, retinal detachment procedure, um, then that really means that you are at a lower risk of developing a retinal detachment than many other people in the population simply because your retina is well stuck on and it takes an awful lot to budge a retina that's been tr well treated after after retinal detachment surgery. That's quite reassuring then, thank you very much. So just before we close, because we are running out of time here, I have I have a, a, a question here which is uh, in capital letters, uh, Gary, so perhaps if you could just sum up for us at the very end of this. I would still like to know when I should have my cataract removed, is it harder to remove the longer it is there? Very good question indeed. Um, the longer you leave a cataract, the more dense it becomes and potentially more difficult the surgery. Um, however, um, removing a very dense cataract, that is a cataract that you can hardly see out of, um, is potentially difficult. But I would rather hope you'd come to have your cataract removed before you reach that stage. Um, so yes leaving it until you can't see anything out of the eye until it is mature in the old fashioned uh, terminology um is does pose a bit of a challenge to the surgeon um but uh, most good surgeons will be able to deal with it and an optometrist of course will be able to <clears throat> advise as well on this won't they oh, yes. at the point at which a good optometrist will refer you to say well, you've got a bit of cataract, but I don't think it's worth referring to you at the moment. But at the point where it really does start to uh, have an uh, effect on your vision, that you should be referred. So the trick here is to go and have lots of uh, regular, um, every year, every two year eye tests at your high street optometrist, um, and and they are um, e excellent at referring people at the right at the right time here. Um, I think that's probably it. We've had lots of questions about ARIDS 2 because Gary mentioned ARIDS 2, but I'm afraid we haven't got time to go into ARIDS 2 tonight. We will have a session soon on ARIDS 2 and nutrition in eye health because it's a very important area. Um, but I'm sorry we have run out of time. 
uh, tonight. But thank you for all your questions. Some great questions there tonight. Lots of engagement on the chat. Thank you very much indeed for that. And Gary, thank you very much indeed for uh, oh. your time tonight. I'm so very grateful to you. Uh, it's thank been you. lovely, very fascinating. Uh, very fascinating talk. Now, if you uh, want to see any of this again, it will be rec we've recorded it and it will be on our website in a few days' time. If you know of anybody else who is asking questions about cataract and other forms of eye disease, then please do signpost them to our website because uh, we hope that the session will be of use. Uh, in the meantime, though, we'll be back next month with another Macula and Me uh, on the third Tuesday, third Tuesday of the month, seven o'clock at the usual time. Thank you all for your company tonight. Thank you very much indeed, Gary for joining us. It's been a great pleasure to have you and I'm very grateful. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a very good evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.